Okay, multiplying two trinomials. Why are they trinomials? Seriously? Yes? Yeah, they have three terms each, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. All right? So this works a lot like FOIL. We were just talking about it. It, looks, it works a lot like FOIL, except instead of doing four problems, we're going to do how many? How many multiplic multiplication problems does this turn out to be? Will? Will, you have a voice. <laughs> yeah. Nine, right? So if we diagrammed it before we actually do the multiplication, we diagrammed it, would be, right? Same way in FOIL, it's never, it doesn't have a good acronym, but it's the same thing we're going to do. We're going to take this one here. We're going to multiply it to here, right? So that's first term times first term of the second quantity, then first term in the first quantity times second term in the second quantity, and then first term of the first quantity times the th third term of the second quantity. And then what? Just to make it interesting. We'll use pink. Lovely. It's lovely. And then what? I swear I'm not here alone. There are people in this room. Yes. Yeah, the second term of the first quantity times the first term of the second quantity gives us a lot to say, doesn't it? So it would look like this, wouldn't it? And then what? Yeah, and then just systematically going over and over. Now what's left to do? So here we multiply the first term in the first quantity times everything over here, and then the second term of the first quantity times everything over here, and then what? Yeah, then the, then the third term of the first quantity. What color shall we use? Something pretty. So it's this one times that, isn't it? I'm going to keep distributing this one times that. And then lastly. And if you follow all the paths, you'll see that there are nine separate multiplication problems, aren't they? Okay, let's see what, how it looks then. Start with the yellow, and we'll just follow this. So we're going to do this times everything over here. So x squared times x squared is... Really? Sure, x to the fourth. And I'm writing it in yellow because I'm following this yellow path, if you don't mind. And then x squared times 4x. Positive 4x cubed. Yep. And then x squared times positive 2. Positive 2. X. The reason I keep saying positive is so I don't forget to write this sign here. Otherwise, it gets really confusing. I think they're factors and I do something silly. So that's why I'm doing that. We move over to the color pink. It's lovely, actually. So what are we multiplying here? Hi, buddy. What are we multiplying here? The, uh, the sure, the negative x in pink, just to make it really, really. Right? And negative x times x squared? Yeah, negative x to the third power. And then... Following the diagram, negative 4x squared. Finally, negative 2x. Then we'll go to the blue. And this is this negative, keep in mind that's a negative 3 there, isn't it? Three. Negative 3 times x squared. Going to just follow the diagram. Is this the only two people here today? Help. I'm begging you to help. Yes, M. Uh, the first one first, right? So we have negative. Okay. And then what? Which is negative 12x. Good job. And then lastly, which is negative 6. Let's see if we have all these things distributed. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We said we have nine terms. Now, what do we need to do? Yep. Uh, like yeah, now gather like terms. Gather like terms. So, what I always do is I start with the highest exponential value of the variable, which happens to be a fourth, isn't it? I'm going to use 
Einstein's practice here, right? Why remember what's written down? So x to the fourth, I use it, so I cross it off to so remind myself. Now what? Yeah. Yeah, so we have 4x to the thirds here, negative x to the third here, which is what? Positive 3x to the third, right? Now what? Looking for what now? Marion? x squared. So here's positive 2 of them here. Here's negative 3 of them here, which gives us how many? Yeah, negative. Good job. Negative x squared there, right? Ooh, oh, that's really brilliant. Thank you very much. Right? This is good Einsteinian practice, isn't it? Because I'm crossing them off, and there this one is glaring back at me that I forgot this one. So I'll, I have this partial sum here, don't I? I can just add this to it, which will give me what? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah, negative 5x squared. Thank you very much. 5x squared. Now what? That was really good. Thank you for catching that. That's good. Now what? Really? You're not? Really? It's embarrassing. Really? That hurts. Ouch. Stefan? Sure, x to the first. Here's two of them. Negative two of them here. Negative 12 of them. How many is that old, buddy? Negative 14 x's. Good job. Really good. Finally, what? Meredith? And then the negative 6. And here it is glaring, just begging to be put here. And we have this thing simplified, don't we? So our new function, f of x equals that. Nicely done.